Hello everyone. Thank you for joining my session on time series forecasting using using coronavirus data set. So a little bit introduction about me. Uh, I'm Sona Pankaj and I'm working as a software lead. Uh, and I was also an ex visiting faculty for robotics and computer vision. So a little bit content and today's agenda. So uh, today we will be discussing about exponential growth in epidemic. So why it is important? We will be going through exponential growth because it is tough for the human mind to intuit exponential growth. Uh, history of pandemics, be because the talk is related to coronavirus, uh, so I thought of maybe we should go through the history of pandemics, flattening the curve, why uh, social distancing and uh, masks are important, why it is important to take care that uh, the coronavirus doesn't spread as much as it, uh, it is. <clears throat> Metrics for prediction. So uh, there are various, met uh, we will be using various algorithms. We will be seeing how they are performing. So uh, we have to define one matrix to understand which one of them is performing well. Here we will be using RMSC, but you can use any other metrics. So understanding difference between prediction and forecasting. Oftentimes people are, uh, people are uh, confused between what is prediction and forecasting. And we will be looking into different uh, algorithms of forecasting, machine learning, non-machine learning, and some other uh, algorithms. So let's get started. So if I ask you uh, a question about if there's a water lily in a pond and it doubles its population every day, uh, at what day it will reach a population of 1,000 water lily? So you have to think exponentially. Will it be week one? Uh, will it be uh, week two, 30 days? So the answer is 10 days. So it will take 10 days for that one water lily to reach from a population of one to 1,000. So a little bit uh, history of pandemic. So uh, you know that pandemics are not new things. And uh, throughout history, there have been many cases uh, like the Black Death, which wiped up about 40 to 50 percent of Europe population. Smallpox was also con considered as pandemic before its uh, vaccine was discovered. So uh, on 30th of September 2020, the global coronavirus uh, death toll has reached over 1,769 something. According to the research, uh, researchers at John, uh, John Hopkins, more than 33.6 million cases have been confirmed and th there could be more cases. Uh, so while flattening the curve was important, we, we uh, read a lot about this jargon in media, flatten the curve. So if we allow uh, the disease to spread at its natural R0 rate, its natural reproductive rate, it will follow this red curve. And this red curve is your exponential curve. It will take that red curve and soon people will be affected so much that it will surpass the medical facilities that the country has. So to keep the growth lower, uh, to keep uh, uh, attention on every patient, it is important that uh, the, uh, the confirmed cases follow the logistic curve so that we still have enough facilities to provide uh, enough masks or maybe enough ventilators. So the metrics to measure the performance, uh, there are various matrices, error, which is forecast minus actual, your mean square error, your root mean square error, and your mean absolute error. We will be using RMSC. RMSC is a quadratic scoring rule that also measures average magnitude of the error. It's a square root of average of square differences between prediction and actual forecast. So what is prediction and forecasting? When you have collected the data, if you have performed prediction on, uh, if you are predicting some values on that, then it is prediction. But if you have, uh, if you are performing prediction on the future data, on the future timeline, say five days ahead, then it is forecasting. 
So what is prediction and forecasting? If uh, till that time you have collected the data, if you are performing, uh, pre if you are predicting values in that, then it is prediction. But if you are performing prediction after that, then it is forecasting. So the algorithm today we will be discussing is a uh, night forecasting, moving average, uh, linear regression, machine learning algorithms like linear regression, uh, support vector machine, uh, neural network algorithm like LSTM, long short term memory, which is a special case of recurrent uh, neural network, and then your profit and animal. So what uh, if we see a series which is full of white noise, okay? Uh, if we want to perform night forecasting on that, and what is night forecasting? It is nothing but taking up previous data and appending on it. So you can see it's just over, uh, over lying on that actual curve. Your blue line is your actual data and your orange line are your predicted data. So you can see it is just overfitting that. And if you want to get into the code, it's like uh, appending the series, but one unit later. So that is night forecasting. Uh, if you do it on coronavirus data set, it looks like, like something like this. So you, you see, uh, this, it's nothing new. It's just superimposing the, uh, on that actual graph. So that's my night forecasting. Now we move on to moving average. So uh, in moving average, what happens? We try to find the mean of the, we try to find the mean of the data and try to uh, forecast it five days later. So if you see the code of moving average, we have in, uh, its same series plus a window size. Hello. Uh, I think there was a delay in uh, you are switching the slides. That's what people are talking about. OK, I think oh. it's fixed. OK. Can I go on? Yes, please. Can I go on? Hello? Yes. Yeah, so if you see the code difference between night forecasting and moving average, you will see there's a window size available over here. So this window size is the number of days you want to predict in the future, maybe five days, maybe 30 days. So if you want to predict on uh, plot a graph on the coronavirus data set, it looks something like this. Your blue is your actual line and your orange is your predicted line. So you see there's a distortion over here. So this distortion is the same as the window size you have applied over here. Uh, it is following the trend, but we cannot say we still cannot say it is forecasting. And uh, uh, there is a lot of difference between what actual is and what it has predicted. So let's move on to the machine learning algorithm and see how they are performing. So the first machine le learning algorithm is your linear regression. Uh, if we want to. Uh, so if we want to uh, vector in a vector form, if we want to uh, say what is linear regression, that then it is theta t, theta transpose dot x, where theta is your parameter and x is your data. If we graphically want to know what is linear regression, then it can, we can say that a line which is going through maximum number of points. Uh, so here the red line is your linear regression line and your uh, blue dots are your data sets. Now, how we train the linear regression model? So to train linear regression model, you need to find the value of theta that minimizes the root mean square error. So here, what we are doing, we are tweaking theta. X and Y are your data sets. We are tweaking theta so that your uh, minimum square error minimizes. So training a model means setting its parameters so that the model fits the training set. Now, if we want to code the linear regression, uh, we can take date-wise data sets from the confirmed uh, data sets, uh, day-wise and uh, confirmed cases. Then we can divide the data set into training data set and valid data set. And then we can import the library of linear regression from sklearn. There's a SKLR library called uh, just linear regression. Now what we can do, we can just fit 
the uh, the points of days and confirmed cases so the the fitting has been done linear regression dot fit now if we want to predict where we will predict we will predict in the valid uh, machine learning days so the graph looks something like this if you want to perform the graph so your actual uh, cases are your blue lines and your confer predicted confirmed cases if you have a black line so still we can see it is trying to pass through the maximum number of points but there's still a lot of difference between what actual case is and what predicted value came out so let's make it uh, let's make it a little bit complex from linear regression we can move on to your curve fitting or uh, 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 like we can increase the order of the uh, line so for that we can use support vector machine so support vector machine works in the hyperplane level now what is hyperplane so hyperplane uh, to understand hyperplane we have to understand what is line and plane so line is a uh, so line is a point with a direction and what is plane a plane is a line with a direction so now what is a hyperplane is n minus 1 direction in n vector spaces so it's not only one line it is spread across n minus 1 directions now if we talk about support vector machine so every neural network has one node so every node represents a kind of support vector, a kind of hyperplane. Support vector has three steps to follow. I'll uh, get into each every step. The first step is to maximize the distance between your hyperplane and your points. So uh, support vector. So whenever there's coming to be one point and the hyperplane, you have to maximize the distance. The second point to consider is to minimize the number of misclassification. So whenever there is a misclassification happening uh, between positive and negative points, you have to minimize the distance between them. The third point is taking the points in the three dimension. So if you see there is a nonlinear distribution of data, you cannot differentiate with a line or a plane. So you can project it in 3D. And then you can, uh, we can see a demo over here. If we want to differentiate it, we cannot differentiate it basically without projecting. So we just projected in the three dimension. Now we can easily uh, classify them with a plane. So now if we have to code support vector machine, uh, it's a very uh, grid search CV is a SQL uh, library. So you can easily import that and you can initialize the SVR model with a hyper uh, parameter. So these are the hyper parameters, your kernel. So uh, the the projection of 2D into 3D is what what is called as kernel trick so you have to define what kind of uh, uh, what kind of differentiation it will be following it will be linear or poly um, c is your regularization function so regularization is a parameter as uh, as for uh, stopping excluding or vanishing gradient so yeah you you cannot uh, you can keep them default so even if you leave them uh, the library will take some numbers by default. Uh, yeah, so here you can see your grid search CV. You just give an estimator that you want to perform. That is SVM, support vector machine. Uh, and you give your CV5. CV is cross validation number. Uh, then you fit the points between training, uh, training, uh, training days and confirm tra uh, training, uh, the, the test, uh, the training set that we formed was training and validation. So whenever we are fitting the curve, we have to do it in the training uh, data set. And we, whenever we, we are predicting, we have to do it the, in the valid data set. So here we have taken training data sets of days and confirmed cases. Uh, we have performed the best estimator. We have given all the parameters that it might need. And then we predict, predict in your valid machine learning data. What we see uh, through the plot is uh, it's performing better than linear regression. It is following the trend as well as accuracy is also 
uh, good. But we are not sure that in future it will be perf uh, performing this well. To overcome that, we can go into neural networks. Okay, now we can go into neural networks. So why RNN? We have chosen a uh, RNN. One second. So RNN level enables us modeling time dependent and sequential data tasks such as stock market, machine translation, text generation, and many more. So suppose there are two sentences. Bear Grylls runs a show and run away from the bear. In both the sentences, bear is different. It, it is a person and an animal. But unless and until we reach to the full stop, we are not able to find which bear it is referring to. So RNN cannot work until you have given the whole uh, data set to be, a uh, whole sentence to be given or whole data sets. So however, uh, RNN suffers from a uh, problem of vanishing gradient. So we will see what problem are RNN performing. So this is the basic architecture of RNN. You can see at every unit there is input, there is output, there is activation function going from each cell to another. One second. So this could perform a better prediction, but there is vanishing gradient problem. Now what is vanishing gradient? Uh, so, uh, vanishing gradient hampers learning of long data sequences. Where, wherever there is a long data sequences, there will be a problem of vanishing gradient. The gra gradients carry information used in the RNN parameters update, and when gradient becomes smaller and smaller, the parameter updates become insignificant, which means there is no real learning is done. What does this mean? This means that whenever we uh, uh, perform a learning in the neural network, there is some kind of loss coming at uh, uh, via neural network. And we need to back, back propagate it so that we can divide the weightage amongst the neural network. But in RNN, what happens when you back propagate it, uh, the error becomes so insignificant that nothing, uh, th there's new, uh, new learning happening in the initial neural networks. So, uh, because these sequences are so long, uh, the, the error is not reaching to the initial uh, networks. So, that is the whole problem of vanishing gradient. And how do we overcome the vanishing gradient? We overcome by using units of LSTM. Now, what is LSTM? Long short, uh, long short term memory. So, what happens? Here is that uh, is learning is happening at every unit, and every unit is forgetting updating some points from the error. So an LSTM network has three gates that update and control the cell states. Uh, these are forget, input gate, and output gate. And the gates are using hyperboloic and tangent function to keep the activation function afloat. So keeping the error. Uh, to, uh, to, uh, so that it doesn't become insignificant, there is activation function going on. So the forget gate controls what information in the cell state to forget. Uh, the input gate controls what information will be encoded in the next cell. And the output gate control what information encoded in the cell is to send to the network as input in the following time steps. So you can see the various gates and what are they doing here. Uh, they all are uh, they all are giving one uh, activation function and they all are uh, forgetting some insignificant data and remembering uh, some important data. So a memorization is happening at every step. So it's very easy to code a LSTM. You can import a Keras model in the sequential form. And you can give two layers of LSTM over here. And then two layers of your activation function. Remember, uh, providing active, uh, activation function is important here to minimize your vanishing gradient. Vanishing gradient is happening because the loss is getting smaller and smaller. So activation function is always important to keep it uh, 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 becoming insignificant. 
you can give an optimizer over here stochastic gradient descent you can compile uh, the whole model you can give what kind of uh, uh, metrics you want optimizer loss functions you want and you can just fit the data so uh, while making the plot uh, you can just forecast save the results append the forecast and make it uh, in the form of results and it looks something like this so here you can say it is also following the trend and it is kind of uh, maintaining a minimum distance from the, from the actual and the predict uh, like uh, there's a minimum distance between them so after that uh, still we can say that it's uh, it's it's better than the previous algorithms but uh, we can still make it better so uh, for now we can use arima so in arima you can use stats model stats model .tsa uh, that that is from where you arima uh, get imported you can fit you can make the series you can fit and you can predict on the valid states and then you can see the plots so here you can see the uh, Arima uh, model prediction set and your validation set are quite uh, like very accurate and it is also following the trend that it should uh, now something about profit. So profit is a library of Facebook. Uh, so you can import it from FB profit, import profit. Now you can uh, make the fit uh, profit dot Fit and then you can give the data of your uh, every way uh, date wise confirmed cases and days and you can predict uh, using forecast C here make future data data frames uh, if you if, if you plot it it looks something like this so your dot black uh, black dots are your predicted and uh, blue are your actual data set so now uh, we will con we will compare all the algorithms. So moving average perform RMSA is 42,000, linear regression 35,000, support vector machine perform better 22,000, profit 9,000, RMA 4,000, and LSTM 10,000. So clearly the winner on this data set is RMA. And thank you. So if you need any uh, help, you can contact me through the email. My GitHub, uh, the codes are available at my GitHub account, sonapankaj 95 And you can follow me on Twitter, at the rate Pankaj Sonam. Thank you, everyone. Uh, I'm open for the questions. Or I will be available through Zoom. Yeah. There have been some questions. So one of the things, first thing is, uh, I think some comments here are uh, like, I understand where they're coming from, but um, the, the thing is, the audience here is a bit uh, wider than um, what individual people are expecting it to be. All right. Okay, uh, I can take the ch uh, chats, uh, I mean, on Zulip. Uh, if there's more doubts, I can take it on that. Right, right, right. No, I, I was trying to make a point here. So okay. I I, um, I request people to be a bit more diplomatic in their uh, chats uh, comments, right? Because the audience here is wider than an individual. Mm -hmm. okay. And the second thing is, uh, whatever you have, please phrase it constructively. It is not helping. Okay? So one question that uh, seems to come up is, where is the training set? And uh, I feel like people felt like there is a uh, top. Uh, information that is still required. So, is there is there some more notebooks that you have that um, might provide more information on this? Because I understand that given the time constraint, uh, this topic is a bit wider than what yeah. you can have. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. is there more uh, references you can provide? Yes, references. Uh, uh, I mean, you can go on my GitHub. There are data sets available over there itself. Uh, the data sets I have taken is from Kaggle, uh, mm -hmm. confirmed coronavirus data sets. So, I think yeah. uh, some information was missing there. So can you uh, please provide it on the Zulip uh, chat and um, CN and um, you know some more people 
uh, Sahesh, all of you will find information there. Surya Prakash asks uh, how to use multiple variables in Arima. Multiple variables. Yes. Uh, one second. This was univariant. So uh, if you want to import it, uh, there's just one. One second. So here it was the valid set that was uh, being predicted. So here the, everything is univariant. Uh, I, I'll take it offline and maybe I'll get back to him. Sure, sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, then uh, thank you for the talk. Uh, CN yeah. uh, and other people they should be available on Zulip for questions on the um, yeah. stage. Um, so CN asks, what was your learning from testing out all these different models? Is that a question you can take up now? Yeah. So the learning is parameters. Uh, you can uh you know always try to find what problem uh you are like uh how to make it better every time so suppose linear regression was not performing well i can take it to uh, to other algorithm like svm or i can take it to neural network so uh i didn't use cnn here because i knew that it might not be the right choice of algorithm. Uh, so choose algorithm according to the question because it's a data sequential question. You can use RNN easily and RNN will give you the right kind of like uh, answers because RNN is perform, uh, basically better in that kind of question. So uh, choose algorithm accordingly and uh, whichever is better for that particular scenario. Like, Okay, and uh, Sampat says the code is not there on GitHub. Can you please make that accessible if okay. it's not there? Okay, okay. Okay, sure. okay thank you. Um, I think uh, there are a lot of questions. So, see, and uh, you have also asked, uh, um, like, what are the other options compared to Arima? Uh, I do know some forecasting things as well. I will make that available in the chat. Um, yeah, sure. feel free, see, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm going to bring you down from the stage, but thank you so much for presenting. Sure. Sure, thank you.